Hello everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how to upgrade your existing Windows PC and upgrading it to an SSD. An SSD is a hard drive with no moving parts, meaning it can do things incredibly quickly and in some cases are astronomically faster. So I'm going to show you how to install it in your computer, how to do things in your BIOS, how to reinstall Windows and do all of that, and then we'll finally test to see if an SSD is actually better than your normal hard drive. All right. So now in order to use your SSD, you're going to need a few things before you start installing in your computer. Obviously you're going to need your solid state drive. You're going to need a SATA cable. Uh, this is the cable that you'll plug in from the SSD to the motherboard via the 6 gigabit port. Uh, on the motherboard itself, you have to make sure you have a 6 gigabit port open. You're also going to make sure you have a slot to put in the SSD. Most computers today do not have the proper size slot for an SSD. The SSD is only a two and a half inch width drive. The PCs today have a uh, five inch and three and a half inch. So what you're going to need is some kind of converter thing. Here I have an internal mounting kit that turns a three and a half inch drive to a two and a half inch drive. You just simply mount it in here. You want to make sure you have the proper mounting equipment so that your hard drive isn't, you know, flying around and causing damage and all that kind of stuff. Alright, so we have our PC here. We got nothing plugged in. Just going to open up the side panel here. And here you can see the internals of my computer pretty, pretty well here. In my case, the 3.5 inch drive is right here, and I'm going to need some sort of easy access to get in here. Uh, most computers allow you to actually put it in through the front, so that's what I'm going to try and do here. You can see my 3.5 inch drive has a little bit of protection right here. A little protective front plate that you can take out. There we go. So we have our solid state drive here, and we have our mounting kit. We're simply going to slide it in here. Now solid state drives, they screw in on the bottom. So in this case, it has a bunch of screw holes here on the bottom. And you're just going to screw it in. Alright, so we got the SSD installed here in its little drive here. So now we're going to insert it into our 3.5 inch drive. It's important to keep your SATA and your power connector parts. It's important to keep that on the back. And then it's going to push it in through the front of the case here. We're going to match up the screw holes. You're going to match the screw holes here, you got another one here, here. You're going to match those up, and then you're just going to screw in your drive bay. And remember, you have to screw it in on both sides here. Alright, so now we have the drive bay securely in place. The next step here is to find your power connector. So we got our power connector in there. We now have the power connected to the solid state drive. Now we have to connect the SATA cable. So we have our SATA cables here. We got the two blue ones, those are the 3 gigabit. And then we have the 6 gigabit one, is the white one, which I don't think you can see. We're just going to plug in, SATA cable plugged in. Now, we just got to plug it into our solid state drive. See so the solid state drive plugged in there. You can see it go the SATA cable plugs into the SATA 6 gigabit there, which is the white cable. Which then plugs into the solid state drive, which is right there. And then we have it also connected to the power supply. This is your type of power connector that you're looking for. You got to make sure you have one of these available. The same type that plugs into your optical drive and your other hard drive down here as well. Alright, so you have your new solid state drive uh, installed here and it's almost time to start Windows and to boot Windows for the first time. However, one thing you should do first, you have your old hard drive here. You're going to want to unplug the SATA cable here just for the time being. Uh, Windows 7 and uh, Windows Vista, when they when you install Windows for the first time on your solid state drive, it'll save all the boot information on your original hard drive, which kind of depletes the whole purpose of the speed and write times of the solid state drive. So just unplug your 
uh, hard drive for the first time. Alright, so we have our solid state drive, it's now installed on the computer. We're all hooked up again, so now we're just going to start up the computer. And now you're going to want to get to your BIOS immediately. And here we are, we're now in the BIOS. This is the EFIOS, or the Enhanced, so you can use your mouse, which makes things a lot more convenient. So now we have our boot priority here. The first one is apparently going to be the DVD, which is the Windows disk. So now we're going to insert our Windows disk. We, have the, we put the Windows disk in the computer. You can see now we're going to go through the Windows installation process. Alright, so now we get to go through the wonderful process of reinstalling Windows. We want to do English. Yes, next. Windows 7 is incredibly simple to install as opposed to previous Windows, it's literally just a does it everything for you. You just kind of click next, 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 and all that kind of stuff. You can see I want to install the home premium. Next. I accept after, of course, you read all of that wonderful information. You accept it all. We're going to do a custom installation since you're installing it for the first time. Here's your disk zero or your solid state drive. That's what you're installing to. You can see it's not finding your other hard drive since you don't have it plugged in. So next. Now it's going to install Windows. Alright, so we finally have Windows finally finished installing here, so now we're going to go for our final step two. And now we have Windows. Windows has finished installing everything. And it's done. It's already booted. You can already see just like that, it's good to go. So now we're going to download all your updates. So now we're going to kind of go through your uh, guide to what you should do once you get Windows up and running. First and foremost, you're going to get all your Windows updates installed. So while your Windows updates, while those are installing and downloading, you're going to go ahead and get your motherboard uh, driver CD. You now have to reinstall all your drivers. The next thing I would recommend you do is to download a program called Slim Drivers. Uh, Slim Drivers allows you to, it checks automatically for updates for your computer, which you will have for all your drivers, and you can just download it right through the program. All right, so now while we're installing all of our new driver updates, uh, now we're gonna wanna take advantage and full advantage of what an SSD can offer. It's called Trim. Trim makes sure that an SSD keeps running as new as possible and doesn't decay over time. A detailed list of instructions are in the description below. Uh, this is making changes to your registry, which can damage your computer if you do it improperly. So make sure you follow the instructions word for word. They're excellent and um, hopefully that'll help you out a little bit. So we just finished um, updating re the register here, so now we can close that. And then the next time we boot up the system, we're going to have to go into the BIOS again. And then we're going to change the SATA controller from IDE to AHCI. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to shut down the computer to give us a little time to do a few extra things here. So now we have the computer shut down. Now if you remember during the original installation here, we unplugged our hard drive. Our original hard drive. So now we're going to plug that back in. So we have the side panel back on, now we're going to re go back into the BIOS, we have a few things to change real quick. And the Asus motherboard is going to be in the easy mode, that's very annoying. We're going to go down to SATA configuration, we're going to change it from IDE mode to AHCI mode. Now we're going to go to the boot menu, and we've got to make sure that we have the proper order of um, boot devices here. The boot option 1. We have the OCZ, that's our SSD, that's what we want to have our uh, OS running off of. Next, we have my other hard drive. And then boot option three doesn't really matter, we're not using it. So we're gonna exit, we're gonna save changes and reset, we're gonna save configuration. All right, so now I told you to re-plug in that um, old hard drive that you were using, so now we can look at it. You can see we have 
the local disk C, that's your, my SSD. The system reserve, that's just kind of your backup and all that. And then you have a local disk E. That is what my old computer was. You can look at it, we can get all the stuff from my old computer. Let's go to Nick. I want to continue. As you can see, the installation of an SSD was actually pretty simple. Uh, it's a little tedious to install Windows, but I mean, other than that, it's pretty good. So, while you're able to get your OS working off your SSD pretty fine, you are going to come across a few problems. A lot of programs, they won't work properly if you're trying to open them off of your other hard drive. You're probably going to have to reinstall them. You can still save the location on your old hard drive, but you're just going to have to do a reinstall. You can still get all of your old files though, however, and certain applications still work. Like I said, Steam still works, for example. So then the question becomes, uh, is the benefits worth it? Um, I don't know yet. I just kind of did this. I'm not sure how well this is going to go. Um, if you ever reject this idea, you can always boot from your old hard drive again, as long as you don't delete the OS. You just go back into your BIOS, you just change the boot order to boot off your hard drive instead. That way you can just load off of that. So I kind of hope I helped you out a little bit when it comes to upgrading to a solid state drive. If you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll try and respond to you. Again, I'm new to this as well, so I'm not gonna I'm not totally versed in this topic, but I'll try and do what I can. So thanks for watching. If you like this video and all my other videos, please feel free to subscribe and just look around at all my other videos. I got other reviews, tutorials, and a lot of that kind of stuff. So thanks for watching.